hello, good morning and welcome. I'm at home and there is a reason why I'm at home to do with COVID-19, which I'll come to later. Not that anybody in the house has it, nor indeed that um, I do either. Um, but it's about, I think, messaging and, and where we are in the world with it all. So, briefly through the writing for this weekend, um, Talking Boys has a problem with it website at the moment I can't get into put in my flashback fast forward future history columns um, but I had been looking at Delphine Pursun who is a Belgian fighter who had two very big fights with Katie Taylor one in New York one in the bubble in the UK professional fighter who was trying to get to the Olympics hasn't managed to so do uh, but won a minor title um, last weekend and reflecting on the, the way in which the Olympics has encouraged professional boxers to go and, and do what they do. And it's the Olympics, that the amateur code. And that seems a bit kind of strange for those of us who have followed the Olympics as I have for decades. Um, but then again, in football and also in um, tennis, we have a, se- a similar kind of setup. Andy Murray, we know, is a double Olympic champion who's going to go and defend his title in Tokyo. For 2020-2021. For Ringside Report, I've been writing about uh, Ed Tuttle Jones and looking back at Brian London's career, who has just lost his life. Um, in television terms, I'm looking at Between the Lines, who uh, was a it was a television program which looked at the internal affairs of British police long before it became fashionable. Then looking at censorship and the way in which Donald Trump is trying to sue Twitter and Facebook because they are anti-democratic. Go figure. So, for Scottish Football Supporters Association, they've been in hiatus for a couple of weeks. I'll be back looking at the law and fans and how certain supporters from during the title celebrations have now been caught up with by the police and reflecting also on the way in which they did this in Cumnock, Hock and Leck, when there was a riot down there between Cumnock Juniors and Hock and Leck Talbot, and everybody criticised the police for not arresting people, but Don raids a few months afterwards, it sorted and resolved all that. Also looking at how Dunfermline got it wrong over telling people about COVID regulations and attendance for the games in the less than serious piece for this weekend for Fringe Review, Hindu Times and Motherload finally getting my finger out and getting that up. Also, I had looked at Broad Tales, which is my little theatre's piece that's up um, on there for the year. Five animated films. Fantastic uh, pieces to go and have a look at. For essays this week, I'm looking at European theatre and can be learning from it as we come out of COVID-19. So, what's the things? Why am I here? Why am I not out wandering about? Well, I think that there is an issue here. Both Scotland and England have got different approaches to coming out of the lockdown and COVID-19 regulations that were put in place in order to keep people safe. And I I can understand the problem that we have in terms of managing the risk. Um, I think working in any kind of care setting, managing risk is something that should be second nature. And for me, it has become second nature. I've become able to understand why it is that, for example, certain sporting events have thousands there and certain other sporting events like school sports are not allowed. I can get in a global sense or at least in a national sense why the approach has been taken that's different for certain sports to other sports. Rugby and football is one that Andy, our chairman in SFSA, has quite rightly questioned um, over how the Scottish Government approached allowing crowds in. I'm also here in a day in which uh, it is the Euro final between Italy and England. More on that later. So, why here? Well, I think it's poignant that it is Freedom Day, which is not Freedom Day down in England, is upon us. And a lot of the regulations that have been put in place in order to keep us safe are going to be lifted within England. But they're not going to be lifted within Scotland are being done so because of the need to get the economy kick-started in order to need to get us back to some kind of normality. But with the possibility that Delta variant, which came out of India, I believe, is ready to really kick home come September, October time, means that we're not out of the woods. 
there's a possibility of a fourth wave coming and another lockdown later. We are not by far, far, not out of the woods. Super spreader events that have happened, like going down to uh, Scotland England game, there are plenty of examples of COVID 19 being brought back in buses, being brought back in trains, where it has led to further uh, infection. It's not because of the vaccination programme ended up with a large demand on the NHS and the way it has done before in terms of not just hospital admissions but serious hospital admissions and whilst there have been greater hospital admissions than some time that you can put a pin in a map in a, in a, in a month and say it's different from then when we were in complete lockdown it's not ended up with people in ICU in the same numbers and therefore the demands placed upon the National Health Service have not been quite the same as before. We've had no need for a Louisa Jordan, a Nightingale set up as it was in England to create hospitals out of large scale venues. And so, as it stands at the moment, in my view, what we're looking at is we're looking at the possibility of coming out of lockdown and living with the disease and going back to the herd immunity that was talked about right at the very beginning and rightfully criticised. Which for those of us who don't have underlying health conditions, and I do, um, seem to be kind of alright and normal. But for those who are disabled, for those who have underlying health conditions, this is exceptionally dangerous. Exceptionally dangerous. We are currently living in a set of circumstances where people who are vulnerable are taking the brunt of this illness. People who had to shield before potentially are going to have to shield again. Whilst the world outside is far, far more dangerous than it was during lockdown. And that can't be fair and it can't be right. Looking at the open up of venues where there are going to be large crowds put in a place where we're able. And it's great to see 200 and odd shows at the Edinburgh Fringe back selling tickets, people willing to go to these shows, and I'll be there. That's just utterly fantastic. I can't wait. It's wonderful. But there's part of me still sitting thinking, what's going to happen? Are we going to be in a position where my lateral flow test in the morning says, you've got it, and I can't get in the car, and I can't go anywhere, because I am suffering from an illness that I will be able to be exposed to more virulently than anything else in this world because we have come out of lockdown far too early. Our people who are attending football matches right now, the 250, the 500, the 1,000 people, the thousands of people who today are going to go and sit in Wembley and watch England play Italy, being exposed to a risk which is unnecessary. Certainly for those who are likely to go if the risk is minimised by the vaccination programme. But is it minimised enough? Are we exposing people who are likely to die more readily because we want to have freedoms that we've not enjoyed for 15 to 18 months, that we want to kickstart the economy because what we want is we want to see pounds in pockets by lives on the line. It concerns me, and I'm quite sure it also concerns the Scottish Government as much. It is a delicate balance between the economy in one hand and lives in the other. But consider that for a second. How indelicate does the balance become where people are being killed in order to ensure that a business can survive? Are we asking people to be individually responsible? Because I have to be honest, without the guidance and without the law, the fact is very few people will wander around wearing masks. Very few people will wander around taking the type of precautions which are necessary. Because they don't have to. And the reason I wear a mask and continue to wear a mask is to protect other people more than it protects me because that's the science. Are people going to dispense with the masks because they believe 
somewhere in their heart of hearts that they're doing no damage to anybody. Actually, they are. So it worries and it concerns me. And therefore, I'm sitting at home. I'm not out and about trying to find a place and what to talk about. I will be doing that. I will be going there and doing that again. But for this week, given where we are, I did wonder. On the football. Oh, let me finish. I don't have a problem with England winning the Euros. I've got lots of friends who are English football fans. I don't have an issue with England managing to win a major tournament for the first time in 55 years. I do believe that Italy are the best team in the tournament. I do think that we have proven without a shadow of a doubt that they deserve to win the tournament. I think England have been able to play uh, a tournament um, by being experienced in how to play tournaments and perhaps for the first time since before the last World Cup demonstrated not just the luck of the draw because they have had the easier route to the final in comparison to Italy that they know how to play seven games and win a cup um, and I think you've got to take your hat off to that I do think Gareth Southgate has proven to be quite um, a manager of distinction um, uh, I think that the way he has conducted himself at times has been absolutely outstanding I do think some of his views are questionable with regards to the nationality that he represents, but that's another topic. But like every Scot in the world, the problem I have is it's not the English people, it's not the English players at times, it's the English media. And the constant bombardment of 55 years of talking about 1966 and constantly going on about it and therefore doubling down on it and ending up with the possibility it's going to be the 2020, 2021 Euros being talked about does not fill my heart with gladness. But by the end of today, we shall know. So, good luck to whoever wins. Let's hope it's pizza and pasta, however, if the English do win it, then for friends of mine who are English who have followed their team as I have done through thick and thin, I'd be delighted for them. And until next week, bye for now.